Hey guys, how are you? Hey, it's so good to see you guys today and happy, happy Cinco de Mayo. How's everybody doing? I think we've gone live. Good to see you guys. We are on Facebook Live right now and it is Tuesday. It is May 5th, Cinco de Mayo. And how's everybody feeling about that? Anybody ready for tacos tonight and Taco Tuesday? So as you guys are getting on, I'd love to hear from you and see what's happening. So we've got a lot to talk about today. And I want to start by, first of all, I've got my Cinco de Mayo dress on. I had a friend that brought me this dress from Mexico. So I wore it in honor of all of my, my uh, Latino friends and enjoying this beautiful day for Cinco de Mayo. So, hey, hello, as you guys, hi, Sandy. Happy Tuesday. Happy official Taco Tuesday. Good to see everybody. So, you guys, um, I want to start out by thanking you guys for um, all the, the good and kind words that you've given me on this series that we're doing on the Holy Spirit. As you guys know, we've updated that, and I've encouraged you to go on my website and download that free mini course. Um, if you've already watched it and benefited from that, would you pass that along to someone? I've had so many people tell me that it has been helpful to begin to hear from the Holy Spirit during this time of quarantine and COVID-19, and how do we hear from the Holy Spirit? How do we not just hear news feeds and what everybody's opinion is, but how do I begin to hear the voice of the Holy Spirit? How do I understand how Holy Spirit is speaking to me? So I want to encourage you, download that five-part mini-series. And when you do, you enter in for a drawing for my book, The Park. Now, I know a lot of you guys have read through this. It's a beautiful romance novel with the Holy Spirit. But we want to gift this to someone. So I want to encourage you guys to make sure that you're getting on with that. Hi, Carla Ann. You're on. Good to see you. So many of you guys are hopping on right now. And it's, I'm so glad you guys are here. But listen, um, make sure that you go on and you download that mini series. And then we're going to give this book, The Park, away to uh, someone in a drawing. So make sure that you guys are watching that. And honestly, guys, please share this mini series. I think it's so helpful for people to begin to listen to Holy Spirit during this time. And uh, it's we have no other voice to listen to but the voice of Holy Spirit. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So as you guys are getting on, hi, Valerie, hi, Sandy. Um, so many of you guys hopping on. A lot of you are jumping over from our previous Facebook page onto this one. So I know I've toggled back and forth between the business page and my personal page. So we now are, are um, going live from my business page. So please share that. And um, Olga, hello. I oh, was still wearing our mask. So thank you, Olga, for helping us with that. But please share this with your friends, even right now, just so everybody knows what page we're on. If you would right now go on and just click that share button because we're gonna talk about something very, very important today on our TAM talk. We've got some real honest conversation on what do you believe and how do you use your voice. Guys, things are changing so rapidly, so rapidly. I mean, it used to be, you know, months and things would change and then days, but now it's moments. I mean, literally our, our rights and our laws are changing every day and we have to be aware of this and we have to talk about it so i really want to encourage you guys and while you guys are getting on quickly i want to say one more thing if you live in the orange county area i want to encourage you to join me tomorrow we're going to meet at yorba regional um, park at 6 p.m for a time of prayer so i'm going to invite you to come we're going to do communion i will provide the communion uh, cups for us so bring a blanket uh, let's meet together at 6 p.m at Yorba Regional Park in uh, here in Anaheim, California. And uh, I wanna encourage you to come and pray. And then I also wanna remind you that Thursday is National Day of Prayer. And our president will be leading us in a time of prayers in nation at 8 p.m. So I wanna encourage you to be watching that. And then I will be talking about National Day of Prayer here at the wall for my TAM talk on Thursday. Hey guys, we've gotta be praying like we've never prayed before. So I want to encourage you to begin to pray, if you've not already, for our nation. And we'll join together here Thursday uh, on the 7th for National Day of Prayer. Okay, let's talk. 
My word to you today is know what you believe and know why you believe it. If you've been following any of the news feeds, you know that here in California, many of us um, have felt very restricted. Uh, we don't agree with a lot of the things that our governor uh, has put in place. He is closing beaches. He's closing, obviously, churches and restaurants. And it seems that he's targeted Orange County. Uh, there's a whole lot of reasons, and you need to look into that for yourself. I believe in some ways we've been profiled. Uh, we are very, um, you know, Republic community, and um, I believe that a lot of churches, a lot of faith-based expressions here in Orange County. So I believe in some ways we possibly have been targeted. My husband and I actually went to Huntington Beach on Sunday after church and just drove down the PCH, and I began to pray over the PCH area. I believe that God wants to do something fresh, and he wants to do something new in our community. But one of the um, things that I read was one day after California, Governor Gavin Newsom ordered Orange County beaches closed to help slow the spread of coronavirus, which, you know, we have very few cases here, honestly. Um, but hundreds of protesters flooded the streets of Huntington Beach demonstrating against the action. And I want us to talk, we've talked a lot on this uh, time together about our rights and our responsibilities. That we have the right to know. If you have not read the Constitution lately, I would encourage you to download it, print it, and read it. What your constitutional rights are, what your First Amendment rights are, be aware of it, learn, be voiced. Um, but we have got to be uh, smart about these things. But another article I read, and think about this, guys, it's saying, is the media engaging in psychological warfare against America? And it was a whole article talking about in times of the past how they would use psych war or psychological war to wear people down, to wear us down in our thinking, and that the media is just bombarding us and bombarding us, and everything seems to be negative. There's no hope. There's always setbacks. It's longer days. Our governors and our, a lot of our politicians are making us feel very fearful and very anxious. Well, this article goes on and says one of the secrets of psychological warfare or what's called psych warfare is to try to convince the enemy troops that surrender is sweet. So give up your rights, give up your voice, don't speak up, don't speak out, just let us do what we need to do, and that it's better to surrender than to continue to fight. The defeat is inevitable. So I believe a lot of us, especially if you're watching too much media, you finally just go, what good does it do anyway? I'm only one voice. I'm only one vote. Well, I'm here to tell you, you are the vote that can make a difference. We are getting ready to go into one of the, the, the greatest um, elections I believe that that we've had in a long time because we have to stand for righteousness. We have to put in office from the president to the governors to our city officials. We have to vote our conscience, but we have to vote biblically. So you have to know what people believe. Don't just get a polling guide based on what someone says they believe politically. Know what their religious background is. Know what their persuasion is. It's your responsibility as a citizen and as a Christian to know how to vote. You know, most of us were raised with certain convictions and presuppositions that our parents put on us. And, and I'm just going to be really honest with you. A lot of things that I believe, I believe because my parents taught me that, or I came into, or like I've said before, a relationship with my husband and then married my husband and he's smart. So I just assumed everything he said was gospel you know, which uh, it should be, he's a preacher, right? Haha. -ha. But I never did my own due diligence. I didn't stop and say, what do I believe? What does the Bible say? And I'm going to tell you right now, that is your job. You know, the Bible tells us in Proverbs 22, 6, train up a child in the way he shall go. And when he grows old, he will not depart from it. We're living in a day of so many voices and we've become so soft in our convictions. So I'm telling you what, don't just assume that the way that it's always been is the way it will always be. You have to know how to use your voice. Okay, I'm gonna tell you something. This is just a pause, a funny comic relief right now. So you know how the new troll movie is out right now? Everybody's watching, all the kids are watching, trolls are out. So my little granddaughter, 
FaceTime me and she showed me her little troll doll from McDonald's and we're laughing with my daughter. And my daughter said to me, mom, remember when trolls first came out when I was a kid and you wouldn't let us get them because you thought they were evil. You thought there was something demonic about the troll dolls. And I said, I did. And she goes, mom, don't you remember? I mean, you were so strict with us. And I had to go back and I had to think how much of my convictions were things that, that either the church put on me or, um, or uh, my mother put on me and how many of my convictions were real biblical convictions or were they the convictions of other convictions, uh, Christians? And I, I love to have this stain. Are your convictions biblical convictions or are they convictions of other Christians? Because so many of us get on soap boxes and we preach and we hold our Bible and we hit people over the head with something we were raised with, but is it even biblical? So this TAM talk, this honest talk with you today is for you to drill deep and ask yourself some honest questions about yourself and what you believe. If you can't write and rehearse and recite what you believe, then you may believe what someone else believes and not what you believe. So I'm going to give you a couple of scriptures here that I think are really, really good. The Bible tells us in um, Proverbs 18, 17, the one who states his case first seems right until someone else comes to examine him. So you guys, if you don't really know what you believe and you're just going on someone else's convictions, then you don't even have a voice of your own. When I researched this, this topic, I realized how many people out there are so angry and they're screaming. They're screaming and there's so many loud voices out there, but there's not a lot of voices of peace and there's not a lot of voices of confidence. I'm gonna give you some verses that I'm gonna encourage you guys to look up because I think they're really good. First John 4, 3 says, listen, dear friend, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they be from God. Many false prophets have gone out from the world and are rising up today. You guys, we're living in a day of unprecedented times. I was just um, given an article. I'm going to read it from you. I just printed it out. It's so good. And here's what it says. Um, Kansas City, Missouri officials are now requiring every church to submit a list of members and attendees uh, to city officials for tracking and surveillance purposes. So literally in Kansas City and communities right now, churches now are being having to give the name of everyone that attends their church with their cell number and their address. And they're, they're saying it's for COVID purposes. So they can begin to track people that possibly have COVID. I don't know if you guys are following this, but right now the drones uh, in Virginia right now that are over uh, flying over homes and cities and actually are tracking us, the surveillance technique, um, um, techniques today that are surveilling us. Literally now, uh, it was interesting, I was just reading that in China, and it looks like America's looking into this, there are helmets that the police officers are wearing, and on the side of the helmet is a tracking device that as they pass you on their um, motorcycles, it actually is a thermometer, and it will tell your temperature, and if you actually have a temperature, then you will be pulled over and told to go home. There are so many things happening right now that um, are really taking away our First Amendment rights. And those go right along with the scripture that, that tells us that in those last days, we will um, have people that will be governing us and, and really watching us. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 3.14, this is so good, listen to this. But as for you, continue in what you have learned and have become convinced of, because you must know from whom You've learned it. It's your job, you guys. And the reason I wanted to talk about this today is I think so many of us were riled up and, and we get on the bandwagon and we want to hold a protest sign. But do you even know why you believe what you believe? What if you could take a few moments? Listen to me. Listen to me. What if you can take a few moments through COVID-19? through this quarantine time? What if you could get away and pick up a piece of paper and begin to write down, this is what I believe and why I believe it. Here's the biblical conviction for why I believe here, this. This is what my research said. This is what my, my rights say. And begin to voice with confidence, but kindness. You guys, you've heard me say this over and over. Please don't be one of those people that are screaming. Be one of those people who are praying and has a voice to speak with conviction and confidence, but with kindness. I believe the church should be different. I believe we should have a voice. I believe we should speak up. 
Pastor Phil is teaching and preaching on Sunday mornings about our rights and how to use our rights. But you guys do it in a way that's appealing, that's attractive. So people want to hear. The Bible says when you make a defense, make it in kindness. So make sure that your voice is being shared with kindness. The Bible also tells us in 2 Timothy 4, for a time will come when people will not put up with sound doctrine. Now listen, you guys, listen, this is really good. There's coming a time where people will not put up with sound doctrine. We are in that time. Our governors, and there's about five of them out there right now, and I believe our governor in California is one of them, that is not hearing with sound doctrine, with what the Bible says and our constitution says and our rights say. It says a time is coming where people will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, they will suit what their own desires are. They will gather around them with a great multitude of teachers that will say what they want to say with itching ears. They will turn their ears from those with truth and those to myths. There's coming a day where people will not listen to sound doctrine. We're living in a day that people, it doesn't make sense. The statistics don't make sense. The signs and the science doesn't make sense. Hey, we would all agree that COVID-19 is real. Coronavirus is real. People have died, yes, but it does not line up with how our rights and restrictions are coming on us as Americans, as citizens. Our faith and our politics, our belief systems, what do you believe and what do you, what do you know and how would you vote, voice it? So here's what I wanna do in our time together today. I wanna to challenge you, every one of you that are on right now and many of you are, are on this right now sharing, um, we have to know what we believe. We have to know why we believe it. And so here's my challenge to you. I want you to define and defend what you believe about God, about your rights, and about eternity. I want you, and I'd love for you to send these to me. I want to be your accountability partner. Because so many of you guys get on this and you listen. You might go, yeah, that's right, hello. But would you do me a favor? Would you send to me, Tammy, this is what I've researched as a citizen of America, as a believer in Jesus Christ. Here's what I believe about God. Here's what I believe about my civil rights. Here's what I believe about eternity. Find your voice. Listen, you have a responsibility and you have an accountability to know what you believe. We're gonna find ourselves just like we did many years ago with Nazi Germany. We did not wanna get in that fight. Do you rem remember America was going to stay out of the fight? And fortunately, you know, what happened was, you know, Japan bombed Pearl Harbor and we got in the fight. But we have to do something to get in this fight. But get in this fight on your face. Get in this fight on your knees. Get in this fight with your voice. Let's do something and let's rise up as the church of God. Exercise your rights. Exercise your voice. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show yourself approved, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of God. Rightly dividing. Listen, people can think we're crazy. They can we say we're the religious right. They can label us. They can scrutinize us. They can profile us. But I'm telling you what, I stand on the word of God, that I am a citizen of America, that I am a believer in Jesus Christ, that this country was established on Christian values, that our constitution was given the blood of our war heroes to stand up as Americans with rights. We have to defend the word of God. We have to defend the right to assemble. We have to defend the right for free speech, but we do that with a voice of kindness. And guys, you have to know it, say it, write it down, rehearse it, get a piece of paper. I'm telling you, you have to know what to say. And that's part of your responsibility. So here we are in this beautiful Tuesday with Cinco de Mayo. It's a beautiful day for you to begin to rehearse your voice and to use your voice. Here's what I want to say to you. Your convictions, your conversations, and your choices all begin with your beliefs. So I want to know, what do you think? What do you say?
So we're going to go to some time in prayer. Uh, a lot of you guys are on right now. I thank you guys for jumping over here. Know what you believe. Use your voice. So many of you. Hi, Naomi. And um, hi, um, True's on. Laura's on. Um, a lot of you guys on. I want to hear from you. So what we're going to do right day today is we're going to begin to pray. We're going to begin to pray. This is uh, the week that we pray specifically for our nation. We're going to go on Thursday. We're going to pray together for National Day of Prayer. But what I want you to do right now is I want you to join with me at this prayer wall. And we're going to begin to pray that God would teach us how to be students of the Word of God. That God would teach us how to be disciplined in knowing how to write and rehearse what we believe. Listen, I just have to say this right now. It's in my spirit. A lot of us are getting up and we're watching news feeds every morning and we're jumping on to Fox News or CNN or whatever you watch. And, and, and can you believe this? And we're sending it, we're posting it. But can I ask you a question? Have you taken time to stop and pray about it? Have you taken time, time to get on your knees before God, to take these headlines, to take your Bible and begin to pray? This morning I got up and I began to pray through the book of Habakkuk. And we're going to talk about that for th Thursday because that's one of the verses for the National Day of Prayer. And I began to just listen to the plea of Habakkuk. And I began to just pray over the plea of Habakkuk. And I began to pray over my governor, even though I don't agree with what he's doing. And I don't agree with a lot of things. He's still in place as my governor. I'm praying over my president. I'm praying over the election. I'm praying over our nation. I'm praying over a cure. I'm praying my heart before God. That's what we're called to do. So once again, I'm going to encourage you, if you're in the area, to join me tomorrow, 6 p.m., to join me at, at uh, Yorba Regional Park, and we'll come together with communion and prayer. But let's join together right now. Right now, share this tab. Just go that little corner right there. Share. Share. Do a watch party. And let's take these last few moments that we have together to begin to pray and ask God for healing over our land. Father God, as I sit at this wall, and so many people are on this feed right now, we're on Facebook Live together, but we're unified with our hearts and our minds, our passion and our prayer. Father, we know that you tell us that we are to pray as a righteous nation. So Father, we pray for revival in our land. We pray for a supernatural movement of the Holy Spirit. We pray, Father, that you would align our hearts. God, in my heart right now, I'm just believing that there has to be a repentance and there has to be a renewal. I just really thought yesterday I was praying and God, you showed me that a lot of us are concerned and we're alarmed, but we haven't repented. We haven't sought you. We're not listening. We're angry and we're protesting and we don't like what's happening. But many of us haven't gotten on our face before you. So, Father, I want to ask right now that Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, would you show us individually, would you show us where we need to repent? Will you show us where we are not aligned with the Spirit of God? Father, I believe that, that just like you tell us that we have to humble ourselves and pray, we have to seek you out, God. And many of us, um, we're continuing to laugh and rejoice and drink and eat and shop online. And, and, and God, we're enjoying the benefits and the blessings of being American citizens. But God, I believe that you tell us we have to be a righteous nation. And some of us need to fast from some things in our life right now that are not pleasing to you. Our actions, our attitudes, our anger, our pleasures. God, I don't know, you know, would you just show us right now, individually, every one of us that have to get honest with you. We have to, we have to move away from the, the things of this world that have, have distracted us from being a righteous nation. So fathers, I'm at the wall right now praying, God, would you show us COVID-19 maybe has been brought into our world right now, not by you necessarily, but for you, for the righteousness of a nation. And so I pray over everyone right now that is watching. Many people have heartache, anxiety is coming, depression is coming, angst is coming. Many of you have shared with me, your marriages are under attack. Um, I know, Father, that the, the opioid um, uh, addiction is higher than it's ever been. Uh, there's been separation in marriages. There's anger. Father, there's so much that this, this anxiety has brought over families. We pray in Jesus' name right now for a spirit of peace and calmness. 
Would you comfort us in Jesus' name? Would you show us how to, you have the right tools in our family so we don't bring a, a spirit of anxiety. Maybe we need to walk and we need to pray. We need to meditate. The things we need to do in our families right now, God, would you show us that? And Father, during this crisis time, would you know us, show us how to press in and receive you, Holy Spirit, like we haven't in a long time? And would you wake us up and would you revive us? We pray right now for our country as we enter in to the season of a national day of prayer and our churches to pray and our our believers to pray and our pastors to pray, our government to pray, our president to pray. We pray seeking you. Our prayer is a voice of expression from our heart and our mind asking you, God, to move. That's what prayer is. It's coming from who we are to who you are. We are petitioning, we're requesting, we are asking the almighty God of the universe to hear our prayer and heal our land. And God, we unify as your church. We thank you that we have a voice. We thank you that we have rights. And we pray for healing, physical, emotional, and spiritual on the homes and houses of America. We pray healing over the physical lives, the emotional lives, and the spiritual lives of our churches, of our citizens, and those in our households, God. We thank you for what you're doing. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. So, guys, I'm going to just continue to ask you, go deep. Go deep. Get alone, get on your knees, get on your face, be still and know that he's God. Don't be in a hurry. You don't even have to say words. Sometimes when I pray, I'm just silent. I put on praise music and I just sit in silence and I let him speak to me. I open up the Bible and I allow the Bible to speak to me. I read scripture and Holy Spirit comes back and he speaks to me through scripture. So guys, that's how you pray. And I'm going to ask you to pray right now like you've never prayed before. We need brokenness. We need a revival. We need repentance. Something's got to shift in our land. And it starts with you and it starts with me. So I want to, again, continue to to ask you to pray. Join me tomorrow, 6 p.m. in the park for prayer and communion. We'll be back here on this Facebook page. Please share this because I'm going to bring to you a little of the history of the National Day of Prayer on Thursday. We're going to pray the scripture that's been um, given to us as a nation to pray for that day. And then we'll pray together. Uh, Also, remember to download that mini series on my website. And it's a free five-part series on the Holy Spirit, and then we'll sign you up for my book, The Park. I love you guys so much. Thank you. Uh, Anyone here that wants to share something, hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Amen and amen. So many of you guys, um, God's teaching us to follow up. Um, You guys, honestly, with the media, be praying over this. Remember what I shared with you, this psychological warfare that we're being bombarded with, with the media. Pray over it and be, be, be smart what you listen to, and what you read. All right, guys, I love you so much. I I just pray for you, and I look forward to seeing you on Thursday at noon, National Day of Prayer, right here at the Prayer Wall. Have a great day. God bless you. I'll see you on Thursday. Bye-bye.